to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. My name's Mike Harrison. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. I'm happy to be with you today. Today's show, I'm going to review some real estate definitions or jargon, if you will, some of the acronyms that real estate investors need to know. And I'm going to do this from the angle of a multifamily investor. And if you don't know what that is, we invest in multifamily apartment communities. We also invest in single family homes. That's how I started. But a lot of us move into the apartment community side of investing. It's a little more advanced. Some people start right there. And it seems a lot of the email email request and information requests that I get um, over the last several months have been catered more toward that multifamily crowd. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more activity in that space. And so I wanted to put this show together because multifamily investing is, is it's definitely more advanced. Uh, there's the educational piece. And, and when you, when you understand it, it it's simple. It, it works in much the same way, but there's there's many more moving pieces. Obviously, if you're buying a, a 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 million dollar apartment community, you can imagine there's there's a lot to that deal, especially syndicated deals where you have a lead investor. He puts the deal together, shares his business plan with those that are on his passive investor list, his friends, right? And they all come together and they buy the property. But th- there's a lot to it. Um, that private placement memorandum could easily be 50, 60, 80 pages long. And and within that private placement memorandum, within that business plan, there's a lot of acronyms. There's a lot of buzzwords. uh, There's a lot of discussion and it may confuse some people. So I'd like to, I'd like to clear some of that up. But before I get to that point, I do want to say this. I want to say, friends, don't get caught in politics. Don't get caught in it. And, And sometimes I get caught watching one or the other of the news cycles and go back and forth or I read about it, but that stuff's paralyzing. That stuff's paralyzing and it will paralyze you. I I get emails from people and they say, well, I don't want to do this because of the instability or because of what Washington DC is doing or because of Wall Street. And, And I just want to say until further notice, real estate remains the safest investment. It remains the best investment. It remains the most profitable haven for your wealth Continue your path forward. Very, very important. You'll never be successful if you get caught up in this tribal war. You've got two tribes that hate each other, and they're going to go back and forth. And I'm convinced every few years it's going to go hard left, hard right, hard left, hard right. But guess what? Every time that pendulum swings, there's going to be opportunity. There's going to be opportunity. So pull yourself away from it. Sit back. Take advantages of the opportunity. You can't change it. For myself, for my family as a real estate investor, we've had a great year. It has been, as crazy as it is, it has been a great year. In the last 12 months alone, I've invested in five multifamily deals as a passive investor. I just refinanced a home a couple of weeks ago for the second time, which is unheard of, and pulled out about $40,000. Yes, my monthly cash flow went down. We took out another loan on the property. It went from $650 to $300. Would you trade $350 a month for 40 grand? Of course you would. Of course you would. That 40,000 will go back into my cash flow snowball. It will go back into real estate. I'm putting a home on the market this month. This home I bought 6 years ago for $140,000. It was 30,000 out of pocket. It is cash flowed every month. We pulled 25 grand out in a refi in 2017. And I expect this property will sell somewhere in the neighborhood of $300,000. Real estate is great. Regardless of the politics, move forward, my friends. The decisions I made in 2018 are making 2021 great. The decisions I make this year will make the future years great. Ignore the politics. Get busy investing. 
Do something today that your future self will thank you for. Now, a quick note for those of you that think you've missed the bus, that say, oh, it's too expensive. Now is not a good time to buy real estate. I will tell you the best time to buy real estate was 30 years ago. The next best time is today. Don't tell me the homes are too expensive. Get that noise out of your head right now. Everything is relative. When I was buying properties for $82, $80, $82 a square foot, you know what was going through my mind back then? I was lamenting that two years earlier, homes were selling for $50 or $60 a square foot. And then when I bought at $100 a square foot, I lamented the $80 a square foot stuff. I look back today... And I say, gosh, I should have bought every property I saw. Hindsight's 2020. Listen to me now. I cannot speak for other markets. This is Dallas Fort Worth. Real estate's going to be at $200 a square foot here before you know it. That's where it's going. The high end homes are there. High end homes are well beyond $200 a square foot. New construction is beyond $200 a square foot. If you can get in for $130, $140, $160 a square foot here, again, Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm not speaking for the entire country. Know your market. And cash flow. I'm not saying automatically buy it just based on that criteria, but I'm saying take a serious look at that property. Let me ask you a question, especially if you're sitting on money right now. When is the risk for saving greater than the risk of borrowing. When is the risk of saving greater than the risk of borrowing? When we invest, we buy real estate assets, what are we really doing? We're really borrowing. Yes, we're taking on more debt. Contrary to popular belief, I sleep better when I have a greater debt load than no debt load. You get rich borrowing, my friends. You don't get rich saving. Investment debt has the potential to make you rich. Consumer debt has the potential to destroy your life if not managed properly. My name is Mike Harrison. We'll be right back. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. Appreciate you joining me today more than you know. If you'd like to reach out to me, send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Ask Mike at L-U-I-N-C dot com. Ask Mike at L-U-I-N-C dot com. We're going to get into some multifamily terminology. I get a lot of emails coming across lately, and it seems more people are wanting to take a look at investing in syndications and apartment communities. So we're going to do some terminology today because there's a lot of terminology involved with that multifamily side of the business. Now, we've done a show like this for single family in the past, and you can find it on the website. But this one's catered more to the multifamily side of it. And if you're a single family property investor, some of these will still pertain to you, but I'm going to try to keep this on that, on that side of the business. And why don't we just start with some of the certifications that are involved with multifamily. You see this on uh, some of the business cards of some of the owners, some of the syndicators, what we call lead investor here in Lifestyles Unlimited. We will call somebody who, who purchases an apartment community with partners. They put together the deal. We call that person a lead investor. And they'll hand you their business card or you'll look at their resume and you'll see these certifications on their resume. And really, it's it's just a, an acronym, right? It, it's some letters. And you, if you're wondering what that means, well, let's go through a few of those because most real estate investors or people that are new have no idea what these mean. So the first one I'm going to do is CAM, C-A-M. 
and Cam is a certified apartment manager. Now, these are this credential, you just don't put this on your card. You have to earn this. You have to take a, a class and be certified, typically by the National Apartment Association or your local apartment association. In fact, we've got one in, in Fort Worth, Tarrant County Apartment Association, and the Dallas Apartment Association, wherever you are, Houston, name the city. Every, every major uh, metroplex in every state has essentially an association that is in the multifamily space. So CAM, Certified Apartment Manager, that's a credential that demonstrates the knowledge needed to increase your community's net operating income. Okay, the knowledge needed to increase the community's net operating income. It's not all about raising the rent. Okay, there's a lot of ways to increase the income. And this training will serve to enhance skills, knowledge, the ability to manage an apartment community effectively and essentially achieve the investment goals for the owners, right? There's several owners. So CAM, Certified Apartment Manager. Now the next one is CAM-T, okay? C-A-M-T. There's a T at the end of it. Now that stands for Certified Apartment Maintenance Technician. Maintenance Technician. And CAM-T, you're going to learn everything about the functioning of these properties, right? The air conditioning system, if there's boilers, heaters, what have you that are that are associated with that property, you would learn that in that CAMT course. So if you see CAMT, it means that individual is certified for apartments, maintenance technicians. Now, a note as I continue through these, our leads aren't necessarily managing properties themselves. Some do, some on their very first properties, if it's a smaller property, Yes, but they get these credentials so that they can manage others, right? If, if, you're, if you have several apartment communities and you have several managers at each community, you want to be able to understand what their job is so that, again, you can just make the whole investment much more effective. If you've got maintenance techs working for you, maintenance guys at, uh, guys and gals on these properties, you want to understand what their job, what's, what's involved. When they tell you the AC is shot, maybe you want to take a look at it before you just dump $3,500, $5,000, whatever it is. So if you have that certificate for apartment maintenance technicians, then you can understand and, and more effectively manage that property. Continuing on, CAPS, C-A-P-S. This is moving up. This is Certified Apartment Portfolio Supervisor. Portfolio Supervisor. CAPS would be somebody that wants to understand how to manage several apartment communities all within one portfolio, right? If you can do it on one property, wouldn't it be nice to do it on 10 properties? Manage the entire portfolio. CPM, what is that? Certified Property Manager, CPM. It's a real estate professional designation awarded by the Institute of Real Estate Management, and it's recognized by the National Association of Realtors. IROP, I-R-O-P. The IROP is the Independent Rental Owner Professional Designation. It's offered to the rental owner who manages their personally held multifamily property or properties. Now, let me say something. The IROP designation hasn't always been around. Del Walmsley was very instrumental in getting that created. Del Walmsley, if you don't know, is the founder of Lifestyles Unlimited. He was buying apartment communities himself and there there really wasn't a designation at the time people hadn't really thought about it and so Dell worked with the Houston Apartment Association and essentially put together this IROP class this was again years ago but it has since grown so there is an entire uh, independent rental owner professional designation program so if you want to learn how to own a, an apartment community by yourself that's a designation you should get. And, and keep in mind, many of our leads, they take the time to take all of these courses and learn all of these. This is part of what makes them the best at what they are. And, and I'll just give you a quick story. I've got a, just to highlight how diligent uh, our leads are, but I've got a personal friend of mine. He's a National Apartment Association winner nationally. He's a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. Great guy. Very, very diligent. This is a husband and wife team. He's an engineer by trade, but he has the CAM, he has the CAM-T, he has the CAPS, he has the CPM, and he has the IROP. This person has embraced multifamily ownership with full enthusiasm and drive. He owns several apartment communities. 
He's savvy. He's successful. He's rich. You'd never know it. It's part of what makes him great. But I met this guy. I was doing a roof inspection for him years ago. Three-story apartment. I'm checking the roof. I'm walking in. I'm taking photos, making notes. The next thing I know, he's standing right behind me. And he's looking at air conditioning systems and checking those out. And he's looking at the roof. He's hands-on. But that's not my story. The swimming pool light goes out on this guy's community. It's not working. So he makes a phone call and gets a quote, and and I want to say it was like $750. And he's going, that's ridiculous. And he was going to have to drain the pool, which this is the middle of summer. That's not, doesn't keep your residents happy, right? Best product, best price. We want that swimming pool running. So we don't want to drain it and take the time to drain and refill. There's additional expense in that. This guy's an engineer. He has an electrical license. He just happens to be scuba certified. So get this. He turns the power off, and he does his proper tag lockout of the power supply, okay? He's a smart man. He gears up in his scuba gear. He jumps in the swimming pool. What the residents are watching, they're like, what is this guy doing? Keep in mind, he's the owner of the apartment community. He's not the manager. He's not the maintenance guy. He's the owner. He gets in, in his scuba gear, fixes the pool light, puts it all back together, pulls himself out with his scuba gear, Pulls the tag off. Pool's good to go. The residents were applauding. That's the kind of owners our leads are. My name's Mike Harrison. We'll be right back. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. My name's Mike Harrison, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Today's show is a bit mechanical. We're talking about real estate jargon, acronyms. Some of these jargon and and acronyms that you see in in these multifamily deals, that could be confusing, and a lot of folks don't understand necessarily what it is. And and these are big deals, and there's a lot of moving pieces to it. So I thought I'd clarify some of that for you. And if you're just now tuning in and you'd like to see what you missed or hear what you missed, well, you can find us on the website lifestylesunlimited.com. Click on the radio button there. You'll find this show and and all the other shows from the other hosts, Andy Webb, Al Gordon, Dale Walmsley himself. You can also find us on YouTube. Yes, Lifestyles Unlimited has its own YouTube channel. It's great. YouTube, Lifestyles Unlimited, or YouTube, Dale Walmsley, whatever you need to find, our shows are there. And then, as always, your favorite podcast app on your smartphone. So real estate jargon, acronyms, this is for folks that are, this is geared more to the multifamily side. So let's continue, continue on. The next one is PFS, PFS. That is a personal financial statement. It is a disclosure of an individual's assets, liabilities, annual income, annual expenditures. The PFS should always be signed and dated and included for each individual with at least 10% ownership of an apartment community. Why? We need to know who the primary principles are. Are they solid financially? Again, we're investing in apartment communities. We want to understand that our lead investors or our key principles are rock solid. And so the personal financial statement is a way to essentially look at that, right? It's, it's just really a disclosure of, of your assets and your liabilities. I would also say as, if, as a real estate investor, treat this as a business. Create your own personal financial statement. It's it's relatively easy to do. You can find some blank forms online and and uh, the ability to, to fill it in and update that. Update it every... I, I update mine about three times a year because things change, right? It's, it's evolving. It's constantly evolving. All right, moving on. There's something called the S-R-E-O. S-R-E-O. You may see this and you wonder what that is. That is Schedule of real estate owned schedule of real estate owned and i get this definition this is from million acres online i I read that website it's pretty interesting at times and and million acres says in the real estate industry a schedule of real estate owned sreo is a document that lists all properties in which an investor has an ownership interest 
also called an REO schedule. REO schedule, real estate owned schedule. So sometimes they'll call it that, or sometimes they'll call it an SREO. Lenders will often request that the investor submit this document along with other financial paperwork as part of the underwriting process. So if you're going to purchase an apartment community as a lead and you essentially go to the bank, right, the lender, they want to see your SREO. Primarily, they want to know that this isn't your first time, although your first time's okay if you're educated, and that's what we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited. But they also want to see what you're involved in. How are those investments performing? Can we gauge the performance of this investment off of your other investments? So put simply, an an SREO makes it easy for lenders to get a sense of an investor's portfolio because it provides all the relevant information about the properties they own at a glance. Along with showing the composition of the investor's portfolio, this document also provides important information about the amount of equity and debt the investor has in each property. Right? You want you want to be sure that there is some equity in those properties. If anything happens, of course, all business plans are, are put together and you plan for things to work out a certain way. But if anything happens, you have that equity that you can rely on. Most investors need to have an SREO. This document becomes especially important if you're interested in commercial real estate. Why? Because commercial loans do not show up on your credit report. Most people don't realize that. This document's often what may make all the difference in whether you ultimately are approved for another loan. So in commercial real estate, those loans are not on your credit report. It's not about you. It's not about your good standing. It's about the performance of this asset and your business plan. And if the asset, for instance, is not performing, that's what we would call a value play. How are you going to make it perform? And let me see your SREO. Have you done this before? How many times have you done it before? How are those deals performing? Every investor, even if you're a passive investor, you should have an SREO. It just kind of gives you an idea in a snapshot of what you own, how much of each property you own, and, and how they're performing. So let's continue, and let's get into some of the jargon associated with lending. Again, if you're a single-family investor, some of these will be meaningful to you, but really this is about the multifamily side. Closing period. The closing period is the time between formal acceptance of the offer and closing, which is also essentially referred to as a completion or a settlement, which is the final step in executing a real estate transaction. The closing, and consequently the closing period, is set during the negotiation phase. So on a house, they may say you've essentially got a a 10-day or a 30-day closing period. Well, on an apartment community, It may be several weeks long, but on the closing date, the ownership of that property is transferred to the buyer. But understand that closing period could be several weeks on an apartment community. doesn't happen quick. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, a lot of due diligence. Recourse loan. You'll see this a lot. Recourse loan is a type of loan that allows a lender to seek financial damages if the borrower fails to pay the liability and the value of the underlying asset is not enough to cover it. So basically, they're saying if if you take out a recourse loan, you can be held accountable for this loan. They will come after you personally. A recourse loan allows the lender to go after the debtor's assets that were not used as loan collateral in the case of default. So it's what most of you think of a loan, right? When you borrow money, if you don't pay it back, they're going to come after your assets to settle that loan. But on the contrary, on the other side, there's what's called a non-recourse loan. Bet you weren't aware of this. Many people are not aware of this. I was not aware of this until I became educated at Lifestyles Unlimited. I'd never even heard of a non-recourse loan. But a non-recourse loan is a type of loan secured by collateral which is the property that you're purchasing. So you're you're purchasing an apartment community, and the apartment community stands for the loan itself. The community will stand for the loan itself. The business will stand for the loan itself. The bank's going to take a look at this property and say, it will perform to this level. It is performing to this level. And we know because of that, we're happy to loan you X amount on this property. So obviously there's some equity in the deal that the bank would take. So they don't mind having a non-recourse loan, again, for 
the lead investor that is proven, that has done this time and time again. So it's a, it's a loan type secured by collateral, usually property. If the borrower defaults, the issuer can seize the collateral, but not seek out the borrower for any further compensation, even if the collateral does not cover the full value of the defaulted amount. If the investment fails, you hand them the keys and walk away. Non-recourse loan. Key principle. I had mentioned key principle earlier. So the sponsor lead investor is a principle of the real estate deal. However, the key principle is the individual who fiduciary duties of loyalty are obedience, diligence, and accounting are owed. It is the resources of the key principle that reduce the risk to a lender when the sponsor's financial assets and creditworthiness are not sufficient to mitigate that risk. We'll continue on with real estate jargon catered to the multifamily side. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. My name's Mike Harrison. Today's show, we're breaking down some of the jargon and acronyms associated with multifamily investing, and some of them can be confusing if you've never heard the terms or you don't understand what the terms are, so I'm hoping to shed some light on that. But before we get to that, if you'd like to see what we do at Lifestyles Unlimited, how we make money five ways on single-family properties, and today we're talking about multifamily properties, we actually make money six ways on multifamily properties, and if this is something to interest you, I suggest you attend our free workshop, and that's freeworkshoplivestream.com, freeworkshoplivestream.com. You can do it online, but it is an actual engaging workshop. You can ask questions there. It's not a video. It's not some sort of tutorial that you that you look at. You can actually participate, and if it makes sense to you and it sounds like something you want to do, well, then you can actually join Lifestyles Unlimited, and the way you do that is givemetotalfreedom.com, Freedom. Dot com. The price for membership in Lifestyles Unlimited, there's a special right now, is only $297. And it's buy one year, get one free, essentially. That is, I'm, I'm telling you right now, that is way cheaper than when I joined. Typically, it's $740 annually is the cost of membership. But right now, $297 for two years. But you have to use the promo code SAVE BIG, SAVE BIG. So once you're a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, you have access to all of our educational information that we have online. You can attend our Financial Freedom Seminar, and you'll learn a lot of these acronyms right there. They'll, they'll review them. They'll discuss them. They'll teach you how to buy properties. They'll teach you how to be an investor in real estate. By being a member, you'll have access to our vendors, right? That's a, that's a heck of a resource right there is just having access to our vendors. Let's continue on with this jargon. Key principle is what I left off with, and I didn't have a chance to get into it um, previously, but essentially, when you buy an apartment community, when you buy an apartment property, your net worth needs to be equal or greater than the value of what you're borrowing, okay? It needs to be there. And uh, that's why you need to have this, essentially, your personal financial statement, your schedule of real estate owned. But let's say you're buying a property and it's worth $1 million. It's a small apartment community and, the, and it's valued, at, or the loan is valued at $1 million. If your net worth is not $1 million, it doesn't mean the deal is over. It means you bring this key principle to a table, to the table. And so the key principle becomes part of the deal. And the key principle's net worth will reduce the risk to the lender. And so they'll allow you in the deal. So you may need to bring a key principle to some of these deals as you get started and continue on that journey. And if you've got any questions, send me an email, askmike at luinc.com, and and hopefully I, I made that clear. LTV. What is LTV? That's loan to value ratio. Loan to value ratio. It's a financial term used by lenders to express the ratio of a loan to the value of the asset. 
The higher the loan-to-value ratio, the riskier the loan for the lender. So most lenders want an LTV of 50 to 80%. Again, back to that apartment community, let's say it's valued, uh, the loan is a million dollars, but chances are that apartment community is worth $1.5 million or, or $2 million. The loan is only a certain portion. The lender, again, is going to want some equity in that deal. It's what makes it safer, and the way they gauge that is that LTV, loan-to-value ratio. So the next bit of terminology I want to review on the show is really related to the asset performance, the valuation, and the management. First one that comes to mind is CAPEX, C-A-P-E-X. CAPEX stands for Capital Expenditure. They're funds used by a company to acquire or upgrade physical assets, such as the property, the building, the equipment. So when you look at these deals, when you analyze these deals, again, we're not buying the shiniest coin out there. We're buying the the dull coin, the beat up coin, but we're going to make it shiny. We're going to fix it. And how are we going to do that? Well, there's, we're going to set aside in the deal some CapEx funds and you, you'll see the leads will list that out. Okay. We're going to uh, restripe or, or resurface the parking lot. We're going to, and that's going to be X amount. We're going to paint the exterior of the buildings. That's going to be X amount. We're going to go inside each unit when we do the turn and we've got $3,500 per unit. For example, these are just examples to put new appliances in, to put the hard uh, vinyl flooring, to put the tile in the bathrooms. We've got so much allotted for exterior lighting or security cameras. Um, We're going to put in a dog park. But anyway, this CapEx list that the lead provides with the deal when you're looking at the business plan, when you're looking at the private placement memorandum, there might be 20 things on there. Here's the money for the low flow toilets. But basically within this plan, they tell you how they're going to fix the property up and they tell you how they're going to spend these additional funds and on what item. And a good lead will report to you as a passive investor, as these CapEx items are essentially checked off the list. Like, hey, this month we finished the exterior painting. This month we finished the lighting. Next month um, we plan to turn five units or what have you. So you can follow it as a passive investor in the deal. But that CapEx is, is very important. You need that CapEx because, again, we're taking this dull coin, making it shiny. We're making it best product, best price. We're improving the asset. We're improving the cash flow. People will pay a little more monthly for a nicer place to live, for a safer place to live, for a a place where their children feel safe, for a place that has superior service, for a place that has superior management. But that CapEx is used to make that property better. Rent comps. Rent comps is an analysis of rental rates or comparable properties. If you're buying an apartment community and it's on the corner of a street and across the streets, another apartment community and on the opposite sides, an apartment community and down the entire row on the back side is three more apartment communities. Don't you think it's important to understand what those apartment communities rent their individual apartments for? Yes, you need to know that. That's the rent comp. It's an analysis of the rental rates. If you're coming in and you're purchasing a property and you say, hey, this property is at 700 and all the others around it are at 800, 850, or 900 for a comparable type, right? You know, if they've got a two bedroom, uh, two bath, then you need to compare your two bedroom, two bath to them. So you need to understand where they're at on their rents. Is there room to push rents? Is this property low? Is this property high? You have to understand that in your deal analysis as you put this plan together. Very, very important. And once you take down an apartment community, continue those rental comps. Know where the competition is. Know where they're moving. Understand how their property is performing. Do your homework. Rubs. Rubs. A lot of people see that term and they're like, what the heck is that? Rubs is a ratio utility billing system. And essentially, it allocates the utility bill to the residents based on their occupant factor, the square footage of the unit that they're occupying, a combination of both. Um, Sometimes it's called a resident utility billing system. But let's say all the water is one bill that goes to essentially the management of the property, right? There's there's a giant water bill, but there's 50 units. So you're going to divide that water bill up using a rubs system 
among the occupants. Now, you just don't divide it by 50. You may have some two-bedroom units there. You may have some three-bedroom units. You may have some one-bedroom units. You may have some units that have six people living in it. And you may have some units that have one person living in it. And so there is a system to do this fairly, and you can give that water bill essentially back to the residents so they can pay their portion of the water they used. And you can do it with electricity. You can do it with um, uh, the trash and uh, all that stuff. So there's a lot of different items you can utilize a RUBS, a ratio utility billing system. Typically, you'd bring that in when you purchase a property where it was all bills paid. You see those all bills paid. You take it over, you make it a better place. And because your place is so good and it's managed so well and it's so nice, you don't need to do the all bills paid. So you implement this uh, ratio utility billing system, often called RUBS for short. Concessions. A concession is a rebate. It's an allowance. It's a reduction in price or other terms of an apartment. It could be cash. It could be the equivalent that the landlord pays or allows in the form of rental abatement or additional tenant finish allowance, moving expenses. Basically, you're persuading someone to sign a lease, and so you give them a concession. I will tell you this, the very best properties, the very nicest properties, the best managed properties, your typical Lifestyles Unlimited model, we're not having to give out concessions. Our competition's having to give out concessions. They're having to say, I know that you really want to live over there in that Lifestyles Unlimited property, but... If you live here, I'll, I'll do the old one month free or three months free or three months for $99. So it, it's an enticement. Essentially, it's an economic loss is, is what a condition is. So I hope that helped. Real estate jargon catered to the multifamily investor. If you have any questions at all, reach out to me. Ask Mike at L-U-I-N-C.com. My friends, this is so fun. It's so rewarding what we do. And that's why we say it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. My name is Mike Harrison. Make it a great day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.